200 kilometers from Budapest, the Hortobagi National Park is one of Europe's most beautiful natural sites. Over 80,000 hectares of grassland steppes and wetlands offer an exceptional mosaic of flora and fauna. The park belongs to the Natura 2000 European network. Across Europe, some 25,000 sites have been made part of this network in order to protect and manage wild species and the rarest and most endangered habitats in Europe. In the Hungary of the 1950s, however, the characteristic properties of the Hortobagi site were destroyed. Dams were erected and canals like this one were dug. Rice was planted, but it grew poorly and the paddies were abandoned. In 2002, the natural habitat was restored thanks to European funding from the LIFE project. This map shows the network of dams and canals that made up the rice fields. There used to be a wide canal and two dams at this spot. The canal was used to irrigate the rice fields. Last year it was filled in, and you can see here the ponds and natural habitat of the Pusta. They only formed last year and are still young. Nature takes years to develop. Over a four-year period, 500 kilometers of canals were filled in. The natural vegetation is coming back. Plants that had disappeared for decades are growing again. Plantain, fescue grass, limonitalia and salicornia are springing up again from the alkaline and salty soil. The pastures that had always made up the landscape are back. For over 2,000 years, farmers had grazed their herds on this fertile land. The rice paddies had displaced them. These cows were introduced into the Hungarian Putzta with Turkish immigration in the 16th century. They're unique in Europe. Known as grey cows, they play an important role in restoring biodiversity. Plants not native to the habitat do not survive their grazing. By grazing animals on the filled-in canals, we can keep species not native to this habitat from growing. That enables the natural vegetation to return to its habitat. The Hortobagi River flows through the park for a distance of 55 kilometers. When the dams and canals were built, it was prevented from playing its role in maintaining the ecological balance of the Putzta. Now, at the end of winter, when the thaw comes, its bed overflows naturally, irrigating the vast plains. Migratory birds nest and feed in it until the end of the summer. In autumn, the park is home to the biggest number of cranes in Europe, up to 80,000. The natural flow of surface waters has made it possible to restore the natural habitat of Hortobagi Park. Wetlands like these that used to be drained are reclaiming their place in this vast territory. These wetlands play an important role as a vital habitat for migratory birds and for different species and insects. The LIFE program helped us to preserve this rich and living habitat. Thanks to the program, the rich biodiversity of the past has been restored. More than 330 species of birds have been identified on the site, some of which are particularly endangered in Europe. This rich biodiversity is accessible to park visitors. The Natura 2000 sites aim to combine balanced and sustainable habitat management with economic and social concerns. Natura 2000 does not in principle ban the exploitation of the land or natural resources or the development of tourism. This site aims to create real synergy between nature conservation and the preservation of local cultures. The new information center welcomes both Hungarian and foreign visitors every year. The park attaches a great deal of importance to preserving the rural traditions that are still very much alive in the collective memory. With the rehabilitation of this territory, it can once again be used naturally. This land can be used for grazing. Tourists can see the results when they come here, because some of the roads going through the Pusta lead to areas restored under the LIFE program. 
A genuine partnership has been created between the local population and the park's management. Without disturbing the habitat, visitors can discover the traditional ways of life of the Hungarian countryside. By improving the quality of pasture for herds, by involving farmers in the project, a sustainable economy is bringing new vitality to the region. Now we're off to another Natura 2000 site in Belgium. In the heart of the Walloon region, for centuries the Saint-Hubert Plateau provided a habitat for flora and fauna, specific to the peat bogs found here. Everything changed at the end of the 19th century though, when coal mining was at its peak in Belgium. Wood was needed as supports in the mining galleries. Over the years, massive planting of spruce shifted the balance of biodiversity in the area. Since 2003, the LIFE program has provided funding to restore the natural habitat. Probably what is most original in the Saint-Hubert LIFE project in Belgium is that almost all the other European projects are backed up by nature conservation groups, but this one was initiated by a hunter's association. What connection is there between hunting and nature conservation? Land planted with coniferous trees provides no food for the region's big animals. With the felling of hectares of spruce trees, the landscapes returned to their original state. Nature groups lent their support to the project, which has brought back flora and fauna that had disappeared. Hunters realized that these open areas would provide more food for game and make it easier to see the animals. The management of a project like this one by a hunter's association is not very common in Europe. The LIFE project is a wonderful opportunity for us to demonstrate to other forest users that hunters also look after the environment and are not just interested in fire plans and kill ratios. We attach a great deal of importance to the environment in which we practice our sport. Spruce trees do not grow in soggy ground. This is one of the drains dug to remove the water from the peat bogs. The planting of spruce on this fragile soil led to the development of a very invasive grass, Molinia. To keep it from spreading further, and to allow the native plants to grow back, the forest of coniferous trees began to be felled. Slowly, the local sphagnum moss began to develop. The natural sponginess of the peat bogs is gaining ground little by little. The natural vegetation is coming back to the site. But the most interesting aspect is the extraordinary partnership between groups who generally do not talk to each other or do so with difficulty, landowners, hunters, tourism offices, local landowners and nature conservation groups are obliged to come together to meet this challenge in four years. That is really exceptional. Landowners were reluctant at first, but they were quick to realize what they stood to gain from improvement of the landscape especially because the second generation of spruce was not growing well in the severely impoverished soil. It didn't bother me because I was cutting down trees that had no future. I was taking down trees that would not develop well. It was a way of correcting a mistake. I was hunting from this hide two months ago, and I saw mallards on that little pond. In the 40 years I've been hunting here, I had never seen ducks in this region, so I was delighted. This life project is bringing back other animals, different animals, which is a real pleasure. At European level, landowners' interests are represented in Brussels by the European Landowners' Organization. Restoring biodiversity is one of the group's concerns. The ELO has become involved in Natura 2000 because it represents one of the most essential aspects of the life of rural landowners who have always developed and respected the quality of the environment. Even if Natura 2000 can be a constraint, it offers many opportunities and that is what we try to highlight and develop by participating with civil society, NGOs and political political leaders in the development of a sustainable network acceptable to all the partners. Preserving or restoring biodiversity and the ecosystem in different habitats 
from the countryside to mountains to the marine environment. That is the main objective of the European Natura 2000 network. It reconciles ecological requirements with economic and social necessities. Supporting and strengthening this network is a priority for the European Union, which is committed to halting the loss of its biodiversity by 2010.